and we're back. So before we finish up the weathering on the robot, there's a few more areas that I have to finish painting up, which I probably could have done before the weathering, but I forgot to edit it into the last part. Oh well. So secondary metallic color, normally this would be gold, but I didn't want to use gold on this, uh, this project because of all the weathering and the fading that we're going to be doing. So instead, starting off with some Vallejo Model Air Rust. And they call it rust, but it's not a rust color. Uh, what it is is a very rich dark brown, and I really like it. I don't get to use it too often, but it would be a really good base for any sort of copper or brass colors. Then once our rust color is blocked in, we're gonna give it a very heavy wash of black ink mixed with our glossy medium. When the wash is dry, and remember it does take quite a while because I am adding in some glossy medium which slows the drying time down, but once it is dry, we start adding some highlights using Vallejo Game Color Brassy Brass. And then finally, we finish up with a little bit of edge highlighting by using Vallejo Game Color Glorious Gold. We use the AK Interactive Streaking Grime to good effect to get some good uh, dirt on the bottom of the robot, but need to do something to the top now. And for that, I'm using AK Interactive's Dust Effects. Now, I'm not necessarily trying to make the robot dusty. What I'm going for is more of an oxidized look. So the paint on top has been faded away, and the light color of this dust effects uh, does that very effectively. And then, just as before, taking a brush ever so slightly dampened with odorless thinner, and we feather out the dust effects. Uh, the only difference this time is we're working up and bringing it down essentially towards the streaking grime so they should meet in the middle theoretically uh, i didn't put a huge amount on so they're not literally meeting in the middle but um, we have a good fade effect on the top and we have the dirt on the bottom so it works very well together i will mention one thing which becomes an issue when you're trying to do weathering on a robot like this or a humoid type uh, subject Fading and dirt on a car is very easy. Uh, talk about fading. If you want to do an oxidized, faded, dusty look, uh, you do it on the hood, the roof, and the trunk. But when you do it on a robot, robots move. Um, so what position do you do the accumulation of dust on? Uh, for example, if I have the figure with the arms stretched out, would I make the arms dusty on the top where the top of the arms currently are, or where the uh, should I put the dust where it would accumulate if the robot was at rest? So that's something you have to keep in mind. Um, I just did it in the position they're currently in. Uh, realistically, it doesn't make sense, but visually, I think it's, uh, it makes more of an impact. For the visor, I'm painting that, I start off with a black undercoat and painted it with Vallejo Game Color Stormy Blue. And then to that, I added increasingly amounts of electric blue, just quickly wet blending them. I didn't put too much, uh, spend too much time trying to paint a, uh, a glass reflection um, that often is often seen on glass because I'm gonna be weathering this and most of this is gonna be covered up. So just, uh, you know, quick uh, wet blend to get some resemblance of highlights onto it, but uh, most of this is going to be uh, gone by the time we get to the weathering for it. At this point, I painted all the recessed rivets with Vallejo Model Air Steel, and then I airbrushed the entire model with some 
acrylic gloss varnish and that's to protect all the enamel work that we already done because I want to put more on top of that. Uh, at the moment what we are doing is painting in all the panel lines using AK Interactive's dark brown wash and that gives us a really good contrast through all the panel lines and also I'm going around with all those recessed rivets so they really pop. Um, and there's some of the other rivets here and there that I'm also uh, shading at this point. I did decide to add a little bit more rust, some rust streaks here or there coming from uh, the open panel on his chest and some of the larger chipped areas. And for that I'm using MIGS 502 oil paint light rust. And just doing on a little streak here and there. We're going to clean it up in the next step. So a little blob, a little streak, that's all we need right now. And then, much like with the enamel washes, we then use a brush with a little bit of odorless thinner on to uh, shape the oil paint. Not wipe away as much of it as we did with the washes and the streaking grime. This is more of a shaping process to thin it out a little bit, bring it down, uh, and just shape it and get into the proper position uh, where I want the rust to be leaking out from. The visor is covered up with once again AK Interactive dust effects and putting on a very heavy coat. And then I let the wash dry for several hours before removing it with a clean cotton swab. The idea here is uh, that it's like a dirty windshield that's been cleaned off with a quickly cleaned off with a rag or the back of someone's hand. The final step before varnishing the model and attaching it to the base is to add a little bit of dirt to the bottom so it's more visually tied in to the base. And for that I am stippling on a mixture of Vallejo model color Iraqi sand mixed with a little bit of game color skin ink wash. And just stippling it on, some I'm doing with a sort of dry brush and then I'm going back with a more of a thick wash consistency just so there's uh, a bit of variation and uh, idea that some you know is some is dust and some is a bit more caked on and with that we are done now the first thing I want to mention is don't ask me about the bases I'm gonna do those in a separate video so it's easily more easy to find on YouTube uh, but Yes, our two robots are done here. And they were a lot of fun to paint. Um, they're a little bit more heavily weathered than I would have liked. And I probably should have gone with just straight black for the visor areas. I think the uh, dust effect would be a bit more effective if it was more of a contrast. Uh, but other than that, it came out pretty well. Uh, weathering does take a lot of time. I know it sounds like something it sounds really easy to make something dirty, but to do it properly, to do it realistically, it does chew up a lot of time. Um, you can just slap a brown wash on something, but uh, if you want it really effective, yeah, you gotta spend a lot of delicate time doing streaks and dust effects and rust and all that. Overall, these two guys took me about two weeks to paint. Um, secondly, I. I almost don't want to mention it, but someone did bring it up in the first video. The inspiration for this paint scheme was a 1957 Chevy Bel Air. Uh, most of you probably know the color I'm talking about. I think it's called Cosmic or Comet Green, um, and then with a, a white top on the car. Uh, that I saw that for some reason I was thinking about these guys, and I, that's why I wanted to paint them up. And I mentioned that. Well, I didn't want to mention it because I know a lot of people would say, well, that doesn't look like a car at all. Uh, but that's not the point. That was just the inspiration to paint these. And sometimes that's all you need. You don't, I didn't have to take this robot and put tail fins on it and lights and, you know, tuck and roll leather. Uh, 
I just took the colors that I saw on something completely different and applied them to this robot and that inspired me to do this project and again that's sometimes that's all you need to get your projects done but we'll just leave everything here uh, hope you enjoyed it again the basing video will be coming by in a few days uh, but other than that we will see you next time at the clinic <laughs>